Hi, everyone. Thanks for tuning in for my talk. My name is Jian Fei Xiao. I'm a PhD student in the Department of Integrative Biology here at University of Guelph. And today I'm going to talk to you about findings from the first experiment of my PhD. As we all know, root is an integral part of all vascular plants, critical for functions such as anchoring the plant, storage, as well as transportation of soil nutrients and water, which ensures plant growth, survival, and reproduction. However, there seems to be a lot of variation in root functional trait expression found in nature among different species, different families, and different plant growth forms. Currently, there is no general consensus on the underlying mechanism driving the diversification of root traits. So what are some of the root traits that varies among plants? The functional trait that my study focuses on includes specific root length, which is calculated by root length divided by root dry biomass. So this is an indicator of root construction cost versus absorptive capacity trade-off. And then there is root branching. So in my experiment, it's measured by the number of root forks um, per unit root length. So this is an indicator of root exploration and nutrient acquisition capacity. Then there is root tissue density, RTD, which is calculated by root biomass divided by root volume. So this is also an indicator of root resource acquisition versus resource utilization trade-off. So researchers have hypothesized that the development of root trays follows a one-dimensional axis representing trade-offs between resource acquisition and resource conservation. So the idea is that on one end, you have this high productive, cheaply constructed roots with traits like high specific root length, high root branching, and low RTD. And this type of root system has high absorptive capacity for nutrient. And then on the other end, you have more resource conservative roots that are mostly costly to construct with longer lifespan, but low in absorptive capacity with traits such as low SRL, low degree of branching, and high RTD. So the idea is that these traits would develop in coordination with each other on either end of the spectrum. Currently, the evidence for such coordinated development of root trade is mixed, and some researchers think that root traits develop on a multi-dimensional axis and is really more complex than their above-ground counterparts. So phosphorus is an essential nutrient um, that's vital for plant growth. Uh, so it is an important component for processes such as photosynthesis and transfer of genetic information. Phosphorus deficiency is common and widespread in nature, and thus it's often cited as one of the main factors limiting plant growth. The application of phosphorus fertilizer then is known to provide stimulation for plant growth. Some studies have revealed that adaptations such as increased plant root allocation and increased plant root system depth are found to be associated with phosphorus deficiency. So by extension, if limitation in phosphorus results in more investment in roots, then it could also lead to the development of roots that have higher absorptive capacity. So roots that are more productive and are better at exploring and acquiring soil nutrients. So phosphorus availability could be a mechanism driving the diversification of root functional traits. So Studies on root response to phosphorus have rarely examined root morphological traits such as SRL, RTD, or root branching, and those studies are not done in natural plant populations. In addition, no study has ever attempted to link root trait variation expression with plant growth performance under high and low phosphorus settings, and this brings me to my study. The first question I am exploring for my study is, how does contrasting phosphorus levels affect root allocation and root trait expression? Well, under high phosphorus conditions, I predict that there will be a decrease in root allocation, so lower root to shoot ratio, and plants will express roots with less absorptive capacity due to higher abundance of nutrients. So we will see lower specific length, lower degree of root branching, and higher root tissue density. And on the other hand, 
under low phosphorus environments, there should be an increase in root allocation, so higher root to root ratio, and plants will express roots with higher absorptive capacity, which is associated with traits like higher SRL, higher branching, and lower RTD. The second question I'm asking is, is root functional trait expression associated with plant growth performance? So my prediction generally follows the trend for my predictions for the last question, based on the assumption that under high phosphorus, plant producing roots with less absorptive capacity will be favored. So we should see selections for lower SRL, lower branching, and higher RTD in high phosphorus environments. And based on the assumption that under low phosphorus conditions, plants producing um, roots with higher absorptive capacity will be favored. We should see selection for higher SRL, higher branching, and lower RTD in a low phosphorus environment. So the subject species of my research is the Mediterranean legume, Medicago trancatula. The plant has short generation time and has many well-defined naturally inbreeding populations that actually vary significantly in root trade expression as verified by a study uh, previously done in our lab. So this is why the plant is used for my study as well. For my experiment, I have chosen 34 distinct populations from the Mediterranean region. Plants from all 34 populations were grown in a University of Guelph phytotron greenhouse for eight weeks. They were treated with a high and low phosphorus fertilization, where the high phosphorus treatment was set at 10 times the phosphorus concentration compared to the low phosphorus treatment. Plants were then harvested after eight weeks with shoot and root biomass measured, as well as um, the, uh, the analyzation of root functional trait with preserved root systems. So what are my findings? Here, the graph I'm presenting are reaction norm plots, where each line represents a distinct population. So we can see how more than 30 populations responded to low and high phosphorus application in terms of both plant growth and plant root allocation. So we found that high phosphorus increased plant growth in general and reduced root to shoot ratio compared to plants under low phosphorus. This is in line with our current knowledge that phosphorus application tend to stimulate plant growth and plant under phosphorus limitation tend to invest more into roots. As you can see, the population term here is significant in both cases, which uh, means that plant biomass and plant root allocation differs significantly among populations. And you can see how this is true in uh, both environments as well. For root functional traits, we found that higher phosphorus leads to reduction in specific root length, which agrees with my prediction that under higher phosphorus, plants should express root traits with reduced absorptive capacity. However, I found that higher phosphorus also led to the expression of higher degree of root branching. This, interestingly, is the opposite of my prediction, which was that under higher phosphorus, plants should express lower branching, which is reduced absorptive capacity. And again, you can see how population differ greatly in both SRL and branching in both high and low phosphorus conditions. Uh, as the population term is always significant with very low uh, p-values. And for root tissue density, phosphorus level did not have an effect on its expression, contrary to my prediction. So this suggests that RTD is not as responsive um, to different levels of phosphorus as traits such as SRL and root branching. So, Let's take a look at my performance selection results, but first I want to explain how performance selection is measured. Here, selection on a trade is given by performance differential, which is calculated by the slope of regression between standardized root trade, which is the independent variable, and the relativized plant biomass, which is the dependent variable, for this given regression plot, which is hypothetical, this would be my predicted regression for specific root length under high phosphorus, where I'm predicting a negative correlation, because I'm expecting that under high phosphorus, plant with lower specific root length 
should perform better um, compared to those with higher SRL. So this is a summary graph for performance differentials calculated under both low and high phosphorus for all three of the root traits. What I found is that all three root traits are target of selection under certain phosphorus environments. Uh, in this case, a negative performance selection differential just means selection for reduced expression for certain traits. So we have found that there is selection for reduced SRL under high phosphorus. So asterisk means significant selection. So this is in line with my prediction that plants with lower SRL should be linked with higher performance under high phosphorus. This is also consistent with the root plastic response um, of SRL under high phosphorus. However, it's worth noting that we're not detecting selection to the contrary direction under low phosphorus. There is also selection for lower branching under high phosphorus, which agrees with my prediction, but this clearly contradicts the root plastic response result, which showed higher uh, root branching under high phosphorus. Um, this could be explained by perhaps the development of higher branching in low phosphorus is constrained by the resource available to the plants, and under high phosphorus, there's just more resource to develop more root branching. But the detection of selection for reduced branching here under high phosphorus is still very much meaningful. And for root tissue density, we have detected selection detect a selection for low RTD under low phosphorus, which is again in line with my predictions. But RTD does not show any plastic response for uh, contrasting phosphorus environments, as you may remember. So what are the implications of these findings? So our result showed that SRL, RTD, and root branching were target of performance selection under certain phosphorus environments, which means the expression of these traits are linked with plant performance. This suggests that yes, phosphorus availability is likely a mechanism driving the diversification of root functional traits. The direction of root trait selection is largely in line with my predictions, which gives us useful tools to predict long-term evolution of plant root systems based on changing environmental conditions. For instance, an increase in agricultural fertilization activity is known to cause nutrient deposition and enrichment of surrounding ter uh, terrestrial ecosystems with a higher level of phosphorus deposition. So this could lead to the evolution of root systems that would exhibit lower absorptive capacity in these areas. My results have shown that root plastic response to phosphorus isn't always predictable and doesn't always agree with direction of selection. In addition, selection on root trait isn't consistently found in both low and high phosphorus environments. So these seem to suggest that there's a complex picture in root trait development, which seem to align more with the idea that root traits develop multidimensionally and as opposed to this idea of coordinated development on a one-dimensional axis, trading off high absorptive capacity uh, roots versus lower absorptive capacity but longer lifespan roots. To gain more insight on this, more studies on plant root response to phosphorus, as well as studies on selection of various root traits under these contrasting phosphorus conditions are important. And with that, I will wrap up my presentation. I would like to thank members of the Maharali and Caruso Lab for their helps and feedbacks. I would like to thank staff members who works at U of Guelph Phytotron who helped me immensely with my experiment. I would like to thank members of my advisory committee for their advices on my research. And of course, thanks to all members of the OE3C organizing committee. And thank you all very much for listening.